So I have been burning up Facebook chat boxes with this guy for months. We had finger fucked across half of downtown Philly. Right? So I was really keen to finally get together with him properly. I mean naked, you know, naked. And it is in his bedroom. And we waited for months, we waited for months, and by the time he finally brought me up to his apartment, he didn't even have time to set down his suitcases. He turned around and there I was, splayed out on his mattress like a Playboy centerfold, one hand over my head, the other hand playing with my nipple, giving him the sort of, well, what do you want to do now, smile? <laughs> that was real, I mean, I, I did want to know what he was going to do next. But underneath there was a sort of a flutter in my stomach. What if he didn't like what he sees? That's always a possibility, isn't it? I, mean, I know I'm not the physical ideal in this culture. I know that. Conventional. Physical ideal, I know. Neither are you. Or you. We none of us are and never will be. Sit with that for a moment. You're never going to look like that boy in the billboard. The girl in the magazine, she doesn't look like that either. She's been taped in the place, stretched and smoothed by Photoshop, lit by tens of thousands of dollars worth of lighting equipment. She's starving. She isn't real. She can't feel. She can only act like she's feeling. Her flesh is not her own. My flesh is mine, every square inch of it. There are a lot of square inches there. <laughs> Plenty of skin to touch with, to be touched on. What is that? What is that stupid song? Your body is a wonderland? Well, mine is fucking Disney World. <laughs> I know this. Like, intellectually, I know this. I spent a lot of time working on this. I know this. But when I was lying there, and he was, he was right there, standing there at the foot of the bed, and I was lying there, I had to close my eyes. What if he doesn't like what he sees? But I don't live like that. So I took a deep breath and opened my eyes and looked right back at him. Well? You look amazing, he said. And he knelt at the foot of the bed. I closed my eyes again as he placed his hands on the inside of my thighs and ran them up that skin, planting tender kisses to follow his fingers. What? I said, do it. He said, I will. But I want to touch your belly first. It's beautiful. And he raised his hands up Place them right around here. Felt like he had come home. Felt like I had come home. That is so good. And now for something completely different moment. I'm pretty sure that was under five, so I'm going to just pick up the rest and wind up quickly about the two shows that I'm in town to do. Um, I think Reggie originally invited me in thinking that I would be doing smut. Given who we've got downstairs, yeah. it's probably for the best. Uh, I do a lot of erotica on a manual typewriter on the street for customers. It's a weird little thing. It looked me up online afterwards. Um, but what I'm in town to do uh, uh, this week are, are three things. Um, one is the Smut Slam, which is a storytelling open mic, community storytelling open mic. Yeah, I'll, I'll hand up flyers afterwards. Uh, a storytelling open mic based on real life first person sex stories. Um, so everybody who enters gets like five minutes, well not everybody who enters. If you get drawn for one of ten spots, you get five minutes to tell a real life sex story. I mean yes we need voyeurs as well, so not everyone needs to come in to tell, but there are there are amazing sex toy prizes. Reggie is one of the panel of celebrity judges who are not judging you, they're assessing you. But uh, assessor sounds like tax and so no judges. So panel of judges, there's the fuck bucket for anonymous confessions. I'm totally I'm good at names. Right? <laughs> so Smut Slam, that's happening on Wednesday at, uh, Bossa, say it? Bossa, 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 B
Adams over there. It's centrally located, I think. Yes? Okay. Yeah, okay, there we go. And then the other thing that I've got going on is um, Friday and Saturday I'm performing uh, my solo, one of my solo shows, uh, Phone Whore, uh, based on my work as a phone sex operator. It is graphic, but artistically so. I had you at graphic, didn't I? <laughs> uh, not a comedy. It's a drama with funny bits. There are parts towards the end, especially, that a lot of audiences find quite challenging. So uh, if you're in the mood for thought-provoking theater, I swear to you, this is the fringiest show that people saw. In. No, no, no. In Edinburgh, I was at Edinburgh Fringe for the last three years with this, and people there were saying, this is the fringiest show that I've seen here. So um, come out to see that award-winning uh, solo show, Phone Whore, Friday and Saturday night at Atlas, at Atlas Theater. And then on Sunday I'm teaching a class on dirty talk and role play, <laughs> using principles of improv to get there. So um, I'll chat you up afterwards with that, but uh, thank you so much for making space for a weird monologue tonight. Thank you.